Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can assign your scene triggers to your MIDI controller. In particular, um, I'm using a Novation Launch Key 61, and I'm going to assign my beat pads here to my scene triggers so I can use my beat pads to trigger scenes rather than having to use my mouse and keyboard. I find this particularly helpful if you're trying to use live loops and a MIDI controller for live performance, like if you want to play keys and sing while triggering some backing bass and drums or guitar or something like that. Um, I find it really helpful for that, or if you're just trying to improvise and play around with ideas at home or in the studio. Also keep in mind this uses live loops, so you'll have to have Logic 10.5 or higher in order to achieve this same thing. Okay, so if you're using a mouse and keyboard, the easiest way I find uh, to trigger the scenes is to use the left and right arrow keys to select the scene that you want to trigger, then press return to trigger the scene. Then press spacebar to stop playback, then press command return to stop all cells. And if you're trying to do this as part of like live performance, it's not going to be so tactile, so using a, something like a MIDI controller is going to be a better option. So the first thing you're going to do is press Shift Option K, and this will pull up your controller assignments window. If you've watched my videos in the past, we've spent some time in here already. Um, unfortunately, the controller assignments window is global. It's a global thing, um, so it, it transfers from one session to another to another. So if you use live loops a lot, you'll find that really helpful. But if you're only trying to use live loops here and there, you may not find it quite as helpful, but um, this is the way to do it. So you click learn mode down here. And by the way, if you're in easy view, click on expert view. And what learn mode will do is it'll create a new control and it'll ask for a uh, parameter. So I'm gonna click on the scene trigger. And actually what I'm gonna do first, um, even before I do any of that, let me turn off learn mode for a second. I'm gonna pull my master VCA all the way down. I'm only doing that just so I don't have to listen to everything playback, because anytime you press one of these arrow scene triggers, it's gonna play that scene. So um, these are going to play, but now that I have them muted, we don't have to listen to it while, it's, um, while we're learning these. So again, I'll turn learn mode on, click on the scene trigger, and then what I'll do is just press the corresponding uh, beat pad or control on my MIDI controller, that I want to map to it. The very first one, at least on my MIDI controller, it turns off learn mode. But after that, if I click learn mode again, click on scene number two, click on beat pad number two, click on scene number three, beat pad number three, I can just kind of go down the line one at a time without stopping and it'll learn all of these six, seven, and eight, and I could keep going. I could learn a whole second row up here if I wanted to. Uh, I won't do that. Then I'm gonna turn learn mode off. Press command return to stop all cells. Now I can go back into my mixer, pull up my master VCA, and I should be able to trigger each of these scenes. But I've still got to press spacebar and I've still got to press command return to stop playback every time. Before I set that up, let me show you one tricky thing here you may want to check. Again, shift option K. You'll see on each of these controls, the column here it says uh, class global parameter live loop scene column eight. If I go down the list, you'll see eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Another thing you should be checking on each of these is the minimum maximum velocity range. By default, it should set it to one zero to 127. It's just simply seeing it as an on button, on off button. But on this first one, it sets it to zero to 88, whatever the, you know, the velocity was that you hit that first one. So make sure to set that one to 127 as well. Make sure, essentially make sure all of these are set to zero to 127. I'm not really sure why just the first one is velocity sensitive, but the others aren't. Um, maybe that's just my MIDI controller. I don't know. But if you have that uh, that same issue, that's how you can fix that. Okay, so now I'm going to go up to Logic Pro 10, Key Commands, Edit, or press Option K. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to learn two more controls with my MIDI controller. Now, I could learn both of these with beat pads if I wanted to, um, but my MIDI controller already has a stop button here. So I'm going to use the stop button for stop, and then I'm going to use this upper rightmost pad for uh, stop all cells. So I'm just going to search up stop, and there's a key command in here called stop or play, play or stop. Click learn new assignment, and then press that button and it learns it. And you could do this for all of your tra uh, transport controls. Next, I'll search up stop all cells. There it is. Command return. Click learn new assignment. Then I'll press this beat pad here. And there we go. So now if I want to build out a performance or, you know, perform live with this or maybe just record the performance, I don't have to use my keyboard and mouse at all. Then I just press the stop button to stop, and then press this button to stop all cells. You could also just press the stop all cells button if you want your scenes to stop um, at the right time based on the quantize start. So one other thing this is really cool for is if you have another track pulled up with another instrument on it, um, sure electric piano will work fine. Uh, but you could put any instrument on there. Um, you don't have any anything going on on any of the cells, but you just arm the track. And um, what you can do is you can sort of improvise and perform with that instrument while you're triggering scenes with the beat pads. Alright guys, so that's how you can use your MIDI controller to trigger scene loops. But yeah, hopefully that gets you started with um, how you can use live loops for live performance. You know, you can use your MIDI controller still as a, a chordal or a solo instrument, but then trigger beats and trigger loops. I mean, you could literally be a one-man band here. You could have your bass and your guitar and your drums all loaded up as scene triggers, and then you could have your keyboard, your piano and then a microphone in front of you, and, and there you go, you're a one-person band, and um, Logic is your, your backing band and your backing instrument. So yeah, go crazy with this, uh, and try performing live with it. I think it's a, a really cool tool to work with, and personally, as someone who's used Ableton Live in the past, I find this a bit more user-friendly than uh, Ableton Live, and especially someone who's a musician, not an audio engineer. You know, if you're, if you're not a producer, an audio engineer, 
uh, or a techie type, if you're just a musician, this may actually be uh, more, you know, easier for you to comprehend and to set up for your live gig. Or just use it at home or in the studio as a way to kind of play around and jam with ideas and until you get something down that you like. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. Thanks for the support and thanks for watching.